right, today we are going to talk about section 4.3, our right triangle trigonometry, which I hope you have heard a little bit before. And in fact, I hope this first slide looks a little bit familiar because I am hoping that you have heard of so ka toa. Say it with three different syllables because that S-O-H stands for a very specific uh, definition. That S-O-H stands for sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. C-A-H stands for the idea that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This is talking about triangles. TOA, T-O-A, stands for the relationship that tangent is the relationship of opposite over adjacent. Okay. Um, now, there is no saying like Sokotoa for our other three functions, and the reason is cosecant relates to sine. And what I mean is cosecant is just the flip of a sine function. So if you know sine, cosecant is just the flip. It's hypotenuse over opposite. Secant works the same way, except it's the flip of cosine. All right, and tangent and cotangent, well, those are also uh, reciprocals is the, the, the mathematical term. So what I assume you are familiar with is when you draw a right triangle, I'm sure you've seen this in your geometry class, depending on where, so first off, we would know that this side is always called the hypotenuse, right? Uh, I hope that's always opposite the 90 degree angle. Now, here's the tricky part. If the angle you are measuring is right here, all right, so we're measuring this angle in red, then opposite this angle, this side is opposite it. Right? But over here, this side would be touching and it would be called adjacent. So every triangle has three pieces. From, from this red angle, uh, your bottom side right here, this is adjacent. Your opposite side here, well, that's called opposite. And the hypotenuse is never going to change. That's the easiest to identify. Now, here's the tricky part is if, uh, if I erase a little bit of this and all of a sudden I say, let's look at theta as an angle up here. All right, well, the hypotenuse hasn't changed, but now opposite this upper angle, this side is now the opposite, this side is the adjacent. All right, this is going to come up on the very next slide uh, as we take a look. All right, so here, evaluate the six trig functions uh, of theta. So I'm concerned is, can we figure out sine theta, cosine theta, uh, tangent theta? And if we know this, then once we know these three, the next three will be pretty straightforward. So I say, well, here's my right triangle. Unfortunately, I don't know this side. You're going to see quite a bit this, um, well, I'll write it using um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. There's our Pythagorean theorem. So we could set up 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. You should be able to solve this and get c equals 5. Um, so we know the hypotenuse has a length of side, uh, 5. Well, here is our angle, meaning opposite it. This side is opposite, this side's hypotenuse. The rest is using Sokotoa. I know sine from the last side is opposite over hypotenuse, three fifths. I know cosine is a J, uh, ooh, I wrote this wrong. My fault there. That's going to be adjacent. This side's our hypotenuse, my fault. Uh, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's four fifths. And tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent, that's three fourths. Now, I could remember that cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite, but it's easier for me to remember that all I have to do is flip my sine fraction. Uh, same thing for secant. All I have to do is flip a cosine fraction, four-fifths, and cotangent. And that's going to be four-thirds. All right, so that's right triangle trig, probably something you've seen a little bit before. Okay, on this slide... Uh, there are several identities that you're going to be putting into your notes. What these first six all say, remember how I was telling you that uh, sine and cosecant are related? You just flip them. That's what these first two are saying. All right, they say the same thing. This one says uh, the reciprocal. Uh, this first one here says the reciprocal of cosecant is sine. Well, on the right here, it says the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. And it's just it's the same way. Uh, essentially exactly what, now this is, this is the mathematical way of stating what I said on the first slide. Um, this is your, your two very important definitions for tangent and cotangent. Make sure you get these straight. Tangent 
is the definition of sine over cosine, and of course, cotangent is the uh, reciprocal of that, cosine theta over sine theta. And last but not least, uh, you're going to see these Pythagorean identities. Right? They stem a little bit from the they stem from the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, and 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. We, w we want to see all of these in our notes. Okay, so we see we've got this problem here. It says let theta be an acute angle such that sine theta is equal to 0.6. Find the values of cosine theta and tangent theta using the trig identities. So uh, one way to do this, so to do this using the trig identities, we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. Well, I have a value here for sine of theta. So I, sine of theta is 0.6. So this is 0.6 squared plus cosine squared theta has to equal 1. So here 0.6 squared is 0.36 plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So I can subtract 0.36 both sides. Uh, we're going to cancel out. We're going to have cosine squared theta equals 0.64. Now that's not cosine theta like they've asked. Uh, I could square root both sides and cancel out the squares. And I could say that cosine theta is equal to 0.8. Eight. Square root of 0.64 is 0.8. All right. Um, and in fact, tangent tangent has a very straightforward definition. Uh, tangent's definition is sine over cosine. Well, I know sine. I think sine theta over cosine theta. I know sine 0.6. I also just figured out cosine 0.8. I would prefer you to write that as whole numbers and realize that that is the same as 3 fifths. 6 over 8 is good, but it's not reduced. Okay, so what we are about to encounter is our first look at some trig proofs, and they are a little tricky. Um, and what I want to focus on here is um, that slide of trig identities that we, we all put in our notes. We're going to be focusing on that slide. You are going to be substituting any piece you see from that trig, that's that slide, to try to prove that cosecant theta times secant theta is equal to 1. All right, now this whole part, sometimes this piece throws students for a loop. This is just to, uh, to make it mathematically correct. Um, it's saying that if you're not, if theta is not between 0 and pi over 2, then this isn't going to be true. But as long as theta is between 0 and pi over 2, this statement is always true. So this is going to be here in some fashion on most proofs. Uh, but you can almost get away with ignoring it. Okay, so I look, and I think right on my reciprocal identities, uh, it said, I believe, uh, secant theta is equal to 1 over cosine theta. So I could actually do that. I could take this secant theta, I could take that part. I'm taking it out of the expression. All right, I'm going to take it out. It means this cosine theta, I copied that over. I'm going to replace, meaning take out secant and replace it with 1 over cosine theta. When I do that, I get some pieces to cancel out. I have cosine on the top, I have cosine on the bottom. Well, that's 1. 1 is equal to 1. So that is an extremely short proof, but a good intro. Uh, you may see some that get slightly tougher, but most of the proofs in here are 1 to 2 steps, maybe 3 on a really tough problem. Okay, here's, here's a tougher version. So I look and I say, wow, there's, there's a lot of stuff that I, I could approach it like last time, but the more important thing that I notice I go, you know what? These two are conjugates. They are exactly the same. Uh, one's got a plus, one's got a minus. And multiplying conjugates is relatively easy. Uh, when you multiply conjugates, it's just first and last. That's the shortcut. So I could simplify this, call it secant squared theta, uh, minus tangent squared theta. And I have to prove that this equals 1. So... Uh, it's actually a good idea to go back, and if I, uh, if I reference my Pythagorean identities, going right back to uh, here, I have a Pythagorean identity right here. Secant squared is equal to 1 plus tangent squared. We are going to use that. Secant squared 
secant squared is equal to 1 plus tangent squared. I'm going to actually do that. I have a secant squared right here that I'm going to replace. I'm going to replace it with something bigger. I know that sounds a little unusual. Um, I'm going to take this secant squared out and replace it with the 1 plus tangent squared that it's equal to. And if I write it, 1 plus tangent squared theta minus tangent squared theta, you're going to see, again, something cancels out. And here, cancels out, cancels out, and what's left? It equals 1. So a couple one and two steps shorter proofs to get us rolling. All right. Uh, if sine theta is equal to rad 2 over 2, find the value of theta in degrees and in radians. Again, this assumption is, is just uh, to assume to, to, for, for future reference. And this really goes back to your unit circle. Uh, this, this value is on your unit circle. You need to recognize it. Uh, so if you know it's on your unit circle, uh, it pulls right off your unit circle. Uh, theta should be 45 degrees. Another way to say that, uh, pi over 4 radians. Those are, those are right. If you think sine of 45 degrees, radical 2 over 2. That's right off of our unit circle, our last section. I was just asking us to think a little bit backwards. All right, so what we're going to do tomorrow when we come to class, uh, I would like you to copy this problem down, be ready to go and take notes on it. We're going to cover this problem as a group. If you want to try it on your own, be my guest. And if you want to pause the video, I'm going to show us our second problem. We are also going to work on this problem in class tomorrow as well. So take a few seconds, copy those down, be ready to go tomorrow. And I will see you guys uh, tomorrow.